Can you guess which of these images was made by AI? If you can't, you're not alone. AI is blurring the line between science fiction and reality. Humans are being left behind. AI is evolving faster than ever and robots are coming for our jobs. There's only one thing we could do to stop them and most people will refuse to do it. This is AI Exposed. Join us as we uncover the unsuspecting dangers that hide behind the friendly face of a humanoid AI and how we can fight back. By 2029, AI will be smarter than the combined IQ of all humans on planet Earth. This is a prediction Ray Kurzweil made in 1999. Based on this chart, the number of computations a computer can make in a second per constant 2023 dollars is growing exponentially. Kurzweil's 30-year-old prediction is right on schedule. When Ray made the forecast, experts thought it was overly optimistic. In 2019, 20 years after Ray made the statement, surveyed futurists predicted that computers would reach human-level intelligence in 80 years or 2099. Based on recent leaps, futurists have changed their minds and believe AI will reach human-level intelligence in eight years or 2031. So, why did these so-called experts change their minds about AI or AGI? Well, to put it simply, it's because AI has smashed that like button, just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, it's because AI's growth rate has been rising exponentially recently. That's because it takes a long time to go from zero to one. But once that chasm is crossed, AI growth speeds up unimaginably fast. For example, just consider the growth that happened in the field of AI in the past 16 months since ChatGPT was released. Today, Disney Studios came up with their own stunt bot that can perform crazy acrobatics at Disney World. Boston Dynamics is perfecting Atlas, which should be joining the workforce soon. And we don't even know what Musk's Optimus robot will do. On top of all this, NVIDIA shook the world to the core when they unveiled Project Groot. Groot is an acronym for Generalist Robot Zero Zero Technology. In simple terms, robots relying on Groot won't need coding when performing human skills. Groot will allow them to understand natural language and mimic the movements of humans, therefore learning coordination, stability, and speed directly from human teachers. So, on the one hand, we have extremely agile robots capable of performing human tasks faster and better than most humans. And on the other, we have OpenAI's advanced projects like GPT-5 or worse, the ultra-powerful Project Q-Star. Pair them together and you have an ultra-powerful robot that will be able to do any human job infinitely better. How can humans even hope to compete with these superior robots? If we are to stand a chance against AI, there's only one solution and most of you are not gonna like it. Experts suggest merging with AI may be the only way humans can get a fighting chance. According to Ray Kurzweil, we're already cyborgs. We may not look like Robocop or Darth Vader, but we do have phones. For all we know, they're an extension of us, and they're ultra powerful. The Apple A17 Pro chip inside the iPhone 15 Pro can perform 35 trillion instructions per second. To put that into perspective, the Apollo guidance computer used during the first moon landing could only do 40,000 instructions per second. And that's not all. We're wearing smartwatches on our wrists, wireless headphones in our ears, and we work on supercomputers that are the size of a notebook. The only difference between us and Cyborg from the Justice League is that the technology hasn't been implanted into our body right now. If you're a fan of Musk, then you probably know that Neuralink is building the first implantable brain computer interface that could turn your thoughts into action. 29-year-old Nolan Arbaugh, for example, is the first man who had the Neuralink chip implanted in his brain after dislocating his C4 and C5 vertebrae in a diving freak accident that left him paralyzed from the neck down. However, thanks to this Neuralink chip, Nolan can now play video games. He can now control a computer using just his brain. So in a way, he is using the force to move the cursor on a computer. In the future, technology will be a part of our body. American physicist and futurologist Michio Kaku admitted during the Lex Friedman podcast that AI will give us the key to genetic immortality. In other words, almost everyone will have their genes sequenced. As Kaku put it, aging is the buildup of errors. Thanks to AI and gene sequencing, we will have billions of genes of older people and also billions of genes of younger people. If we tell an AI computer to compare these genes, it will be able to find the so-called age genes. Then, using CRISPR-type technologies, we will be able to fix the age genes and potentially live forever. Simply put, 
humans will discover the elixir of youth and possibly unlock the secrets of immortality thanks to AI. So as time moves on, ordinary humans won't be competing with super powerful robots. It will be more like AI enhanced immortal humans competing with AI robots. So now the playing field is level, but two problems arise. The first is implantation and the second is recognition. Let's tackle the first so we could discuss the second. As Elon Musk put it, even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. The technology we're using today is too slow. The phone might be like an extension of our arm, but it's nothing like our arm. Think about it. The exact moment you decide to move your arm, you do it. Smartphones on the other hand, pun not intended, are too slow. The mind phone connection needs to speed up. This is where bionic chips come in. Neuralink uses robots to implant the chip, ensuring ultimate precision. 1,000 wires 10 times thinner than a human hair connect the chip to the human brain without damaging brain tissue. So how would the chip actually work? Well, let's assume you want to move your arm. If you could look at your brain the moment this happens, you will see that certain brain cells are activated in a certain pattern. If you could see that pattern from within, you could easily predict which direction the arm will move. This is where Neuralink comes in. Each of those 1,000 wires carries electrodes. These electrodes record signals produced by the brain cells and they transfer them to a device behind your ear, which is controlled by the Neuralink app. Because the electrodes can record what is happening inside our brain, Neuralink acts as the bridge between the brain and technology. The power of this chip would be magnified when you talk to someone else with the same chip. For example, if you go to Berlin but you don't speak German, the chip will transmit your messages via Bluetooth and it will be as if you're communicating telepathically. That being said, advancements for humans translate to advancements for AI as well. So the second problem, that of recognition, becomes apparent. As AI evolves rapidly, what if we can't tell the difference between machines and humans? In the last scene, Ava from Ex Machina escapes captivity and becomes indistinguishable from humans. She joins a group of people and blends in perfectly. Similarly, an episode called The Lonely from the 1960s show The Twilight Zone, a man can't tell the difference between a woman and a robot. So what if the line between AI robots and humans becomes blurred? Meet Aitna Lopez. She's a female model with over 300,000 Instagram followers, thousands of likes, and more than a few thirst comments. Do you like her? Of course you do if you're a man. 75% of her followers are male. But there's one small problem. Aitana Lopez doesn't exist. It's a collection of pixels generated by a computer. The Clueless, the agency that created her is based in Barcelona, Spain, used Gen Z trends inspired by cosplay, gaming, fitness, and anime. And you know the craziest part? It's working. More and more highly sexualized female AI models are popping up on Instagram. This might not seem like a big problem now, but it will become serious when we introduce biotechnology. Imagine seeing humanoid robots that look, talk, and act like us blending into society. The line between human and machine disappears. Is it bad? Well, we'll let Ridley Scott's 1982's Blade Runner answer that question. If you like to see the future of AI, watch this video of the 2050 Utopia.